Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Rosen Jelev. Um, this is will be sort of a short presentation on an open source project that Tom is contributing to and sort of introducing it. Um, so who am I? Uh, I'm software engineer Tom. Worked on the Mali GPU driver for the past two years or so. Uh, and this uh, presentation is essentially a project that is putting uh, the Vulkan WSI code, so Windowing System Integration code, as a layer. It's actually an idea that has been floating around for quite some time now. I think best described by, um, I think, Jason Ekstrand, Ek Ek yeah, Ekstrand in his blog post a few years ago when refactoring Mesa's WSI implementation for Vulkan. Uh, so the talk will be a fairly brief introduction on windowing systems and Vulkan. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but still. Um, and then describing our approach to getting an existing WSI implementation as a Vulkan layer uh, and the current status of the project. The project is hosted uh, on freedesktop.org uh, under Mesa right now. So um, 3D graphics drivers and windowing systems. So most 3D graphics APIs have a concept of a windowing system that uh, sort of manages the rendered output and presents it to the user in some way. Uh, and then there is negotiation with windowing system specific APIs between the graphics driver uh, to synchronize and allocate appropriate memory. Um, there, for most operating systems, there only exists one windowing system, but for Linux it's a bit more complicated where we have a lot of different choice and there have been quite a lot of developments in the past years around windowing systems on Linux. Uh, and it's generally desirable to uh, have that part of the GPU driver more closely aligned with the windowing system as the changes to that code are mostly in response to changes in the windowing system code as opposed to the core uh, rendering driver that handles mostly new hardware and dealing with the actual GPU hardware. So how does uh, windowing system integration work in Vulkan? It's actually not part of the core Vulkan API, so you can have a driver that just renders things to memory, uh, and you don't need to care about displaying it to a user. Uh, if you want to, there is uh, two objects in the Vulkan API, uh, exposes extensions. There is a surface object, which is the native window connection, and there is a specific extension for different windowing systems to create the appropriate uh, window. Uh, and then there is the swap chain, which is essentially a queue of all the buffers or the images that will get uh, sent to the windowing system to get presented to the user. Uh, how do uh, uh, Vulkan drivers currently implement uh, the WSI extensions? It's mostly using a sort of a clean separation between the core driver and the uh, WSI specific code, which is uh, sort of standalone uh, for most good, good design drivers uh, and um, different drivers use different interfaces but Mesa has, uh, uses something that looks like a Vulkan extension uh, and it uses quite a lot of DRM modifiers which <coughs> is quite a cool way to specify a format. Uh, it allows you, apart from specifying the DRM for CC format for a buffer, also specify the layout of it. So you can have uh, interesting hardware optimized layouts that are both supported by the GPU for rendering and for the display controller for output. Uh, you can have various styling. ARM uses it, for example, to specify its compression for AFBC. Uh, and yeah, it, it's mostly a standalone from most drivers, but it's still part of the <coughs> GPU driver itself. Uh, for Android, it's interesting uh, because it puts most of its code in the loader and demands uh, implementations to implement sort of an extension. So it's more of a approach that is quite like what we're doing here, where they have the windowing system code outside of the driver, and the driver just imports and exports buffers. Uh, quickly about Vulkan's loaders and layers, uh, the Vulkan API doesn't demand for you to use a loader, but most systems use the uh, reference cron loader de uh, developed by LunaG, uh, which allows you to have multiple Vulkan drivers coexisting in the same system and uh, select the appropriate device and driver that you want to use. 
by the application, it also allows you to specify a layer or multiple layers that you would like to use, and that is sort of a API-defined way to have libraries that intercept your entry points instead of hacking it away. Uh, and this is a, what we essentially want to use in our project, to have the entry points for the WSI uh, part of the Vulkan spec be handled by a layer, and the rest just use the normal Vulkan driver and doesn't need to care about what windowing system it's running on. So this is sort of fairly simple explanation of what we're trying to do. Uh, capture the entry points for the uh, WSI extensions, implement them, and then rely on just core Vulkan uh, part of the uh, driver and some of the extensions that uh, Kronos has defined for importing and exporting memory and also doing synchronization. This is part of the weakness of this, where we require some uh, extensions to be supported by a Vulkan ICD um, in order for the layer to work. But we'll come to that later. So uh, what did we need to do to make a, an existing WS implementation as a layer? That's not, not actually much, uh, mostly do some wrapping in the API that the loader expects to load the layer, uh, do some bookkeeping for, in order for the layer to work for multiple uh, install ICDs or Vulkan drivers, uh, because unlike if you put the double cycle in the driver, you need to support multiple different ones and you need to do some book bookkeeping, but that's not much. Uh, most of the common functionality is for the different types of windowing systems that we want to support is the same, and it's taken from an existing WSI implementation, uh, and you select essentially the implementation for the double, for the windowing system specific code by the surface type of the Vulkan surface. Uh, it's also, we would also like to use this um, image GRM format modifier extensions quite extensively to do uh, format negotiation between the windowing system display controller uh, and the Vulkan driver. Uh, again, because we think that uh, it is a very useful way to define uh, the layout of a buffer. Um, there are two points, two main points to consider here about how we do it, in, uh, how we do memory allocation and synchronization as a layer. Um, there's two ways to allocate memory. We can expose it from a Vulkan driver, uh, given the provided extension as a DMA buffer. Um, this sort of works uh, well when the same driver uh, is responsible for the same DRM driver is responsible for the display controller and the GPU. But if you have display controllers and GPUs from different vendors or uh, multiple vendors from one GPU to another display controller, we would really like to use a system allocator. Um, so we are also want to have support for a system allocator where we can import memory uh, into a Vulkan driver. For synchronization, there is, uh, you can actually use the core Vulkan primitives to have synchronization in a CPU thread, which is one way we're doing it right now. Uh, that's not very efficient though. Uh, we could have explicit synchronization for windowing system that support explicit synchronization with fences, and there is already extensions to get uh, external fences into uh, the Vulkan driver. Um, for implicit synchronization, it's a bit more complicated because we still think that we might need further uh, Vulkan extension support in order to get that performance as uh, current Vulkan drivers expected. So what's the current status of the project? Um, uh, committed an initial patch that provided essentially the core uh, infrastructure, bookkeeping, uh, and an implementation of uh, headless surface, uh, which is a sort of course on course windowing system, uh, which is more of a helper for an application to try uh, and to use the swap chain and surface uh, objects while not actually presenting anything and just writing to uh, GPU uh, driver allocated memory. Um, there is also a work in progress merge request on the project 
to get uh, some initial wayland support to test some of the more, uh, the, for example, the DRM format modifier extension and actually allocating memory and importing and exporting it, and so on. Uh, we've added uh, an external memory allocator interface, and uh, we've currently implemented it using ION, uh, but this is really something that's not quite standardized, but I think there is a talk later in the conference about uh, Linux memory allocators. So maybe we can take more input from that. Um, yes, so what are some of the difficulties, challenges, uh, doing, when doing system integration in, in this way? Uh, introduces some overhead, although not much. Because uh, you have to have the bookkeeping uh, and so on that's not required for uh, when implementing it as part of a Vulkan driver. Um, there is also quite a reliance on some extensions that are not widely supported, uh, which could be a problem for uh, adopting this in, in more drivers. Uh, and we also have some of the um, some of the parts of the Vulkan WSI spec that are not quite separated out uh, in most implementation, like for example, switching the layout of a image that would get presented to a windowing system to a specific layout that's only su supposed to be used for such images, doesn't quite work with uh, the imported images yet, or we, we are not supposed to transition the imported images into that layout, even though the application would try to do it if they're expecting to use uh, WSI extension as normal. So we need to hide that in some way as well, and we haven't actually figured that out too well yet, but uh, I think that will probably get solved. And as I mentioned, may require a system memory allocator if you want to support multiple vendors uh, and so on. Um, and that is not quite standardized on Linux. Um, there is also the fact that given that we are using just the Kronos API as published uh, and the published extensions, uh, if we actually want to change something or add something else to that interface between the windowing system interface and the core Vulkan driver, we would probably need to define an extension in a wider sort of interest area instead of having a single driver uh, define its own private interface and then you can change it pretty easily. Uh, well, in this case, you have to rely on publishing extensions and standardizing. Uh, but why are we actually trying to do this? Uh, what are the benefits from uh, proceeding with this? It sort of makes sense in, in the uh, Vulkan ecosystem. It, this is common code often shared between, uh, like, that could be shared between different Vulkan implementations. Um, and it's often the same or very similar. And kind of makes sense in the whole Vulkan X system to have it as a layer on top of a uh, Vulkan driver. It essentially already is for, for most drivers, but it's just inside the ICD. Um, the, if the same sort of code is shared to implement windowing system support across Vulkan drivers, it will have some benefit on the users. It will have a uni more uniform support for features. Uh, and to also encourage vocal implementation to actually support some of the required extensions for import, export, and synchronization. And those extensions are quite useful outside of windowing system integration. Also, VR uses them, uh, but uh, also mostly windowing system stuff. Um, in any case, it should benefit uh, the ecosystem if we if we are proceed with this project and it gets more widely adopted. It also uh, enables more people to contribute to this. So for example, people that work on different drivers apart from Mesa, or, or uh, like more people can actually contribute code to this, and it's code shared that could be shared by everyone. Um, it's, uh, and if distributed separately uh, from the Vulkan, like core Vulkan driver, it could actually maybe uh, make updates easier for fixing windowing system issues and so on, that you, you're not tied to a driver that is meant to support hardware. 
Um, yeah, that's about all. It's sort of a brief introduction. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, and also if you if don't if you want to talk about it later, I'm sure that I and other people from ARM will be available to talk about it. Thank you. Yes? I'll just shout it. Uh, sure, I'll so beat it. How, how do you imagine this being uh, distributed to end users? Uh, we imagine it mostly like the current Vulkan loader is distributed. So either it could be part of a package that includes both the loader and this, this layer that the loader would work on, because a lot of the layer is essentially implementing APIs that the loader specifies in order to work as a layer. So it, I imagine it's pretty closely tied to the system loader. Yes? Uh, yes, uh, so <laughs> Vulkan has a concept of uh, images uh, being in a specific layout for certain types of accesses, uh, and it requires you to submit a command to the GPU to, uh, or commands to the queue to transition the layout of an image before using it, and there is a specific layout uh, specified for images that are part of a swap chain, uh, which essentially says to the driver this will be used uh, by the windowing system now and not the driver, so put it in that sort of access mode. Uh, and it's required by the specs uh, for the applications to do that. And there is a few ways uh, an application can switch uh, the layout of an image. Uh, and what we need to do to be a proper layer and well-behaved layer so that we don't expose the windowing system stuff to the core driver. The core driver doesn't know about that this image will actually be sent to a windowing system, is to somehow intercept that uh, layout transition uh, and then do the, an appropriate, change it to an appropriate layout that will do the work. I guess that's all, so thank you everyone.